Back in the days of the First Crusade, there lived a great knight named Sir Robert, who was a fine fighter and praised his lord, Lord Henry, very much. After fighting for him for five years, Henry bestowed upon him with Robert, his daughter Matilda's hand in marriage. Lord, thank you very much for your wonderful honor. She was the fairest maiden I've yet to lay my eyes upon you, thank you, praise. I'm quite glad you think so. My daughter admires your strength and chivalry very much, Sean says. And so the two were wed and they were very happy together. They were very much in love and had fantastic years together. All this time, Lord Henry came to admire his great knight even more. Robert had prevented many sieges by scaring the enemy men into submission. Three years passed by like this and Robert became almost contented. He had something had changed. He had the fighting passion inside him, but nowhere to fight. Then the crusade started and he urged to leave. Matilda, I must leave and fight for Almighty God. He is calling and we must liberate the streets of holy Jerusalem from those barbarians, he exclaimed. Matilda wanted him to stay home, but she was confident of whether to speak or not, lest she be beaten by him, but her heart got the better of her. Robert, please don't leave home. We need you, and you have a vow to my father, she pointed out. That doesn't matter, he shouted. I must honor my God and my church. I will take up arms and defend my rights and my land, he explained. He had put his foot down, but not for the reason he said. The main reason he wanted to be was so that he could finally leave and go fight, which in his heart he believed that he had been put on this earth to do. He had many arguments just like the preceding one, and finally he was to bed. I am leaving, and that is final, he shouted. He finally made up his mind, partially based on his drunkenness of that night. She dared not speak back, lest he feed the which allowed him to accept it. The long argument until it got to the point where she screamed, You may leave, but if you choose to do so, then you must take a part of me with you, if you must go. I dare you, cut off my finger and go and fight if you must. His eyes nearly popped out of his head, but nothing could stop him now. So he cut off her finger and he left. He reached the port, which is where he would fly for the army, and was walking readily for two reasons. For one, at 26 years of age, he was in the prime of his life. Secondly, being a knight, they knew he must have proved himself worthy on the battlefield, and they walked him soon. He was practically accepted before they even met him. The ship right there was very dirty and the food was a bit run, but he made it there in one piece. Once there, he did not see any actions for a few months. He got anxious and complained to his commanding officer. When, when do we get to see some action finally? I came to this ball and I expect to fight, he protested. Now, when he said that Sir Robert expected his officer to take this as a call of battle sort of shit, but his officer was, was in poor spirits, but I need not go over the reasons. Fighting you want, eh? He fumed. Oh, well, you will definitely see some action now. You, sir, are going to the front lines, he barked. Now, back then, the front lines was a place of almost certain death. We were the first ones to be either shot by an arrow, trampled by an elephant, or rushed by the infantry. And our brave hero knew this. But he was subordinate <coughs> to his officers, so he followed. It took him a while to get from his base near the Mediterranean down to the land of Israel. Now, just as he was arriving, the Muslims had just surrendered, and the Christians had finally won the siege of Maharat. So naturally, this being the first chance of combat, he rushed inside with the rest of the soldiers. But he was not prepared for what he was about to see. Dead, mutilated, Muslim bodies everywhere. But this was not the part that bothered him. He expected to see dead soldiers. Oh my God, what have they done? He screamed inside. The streets were littered with the hacked of corpses of not only soldiers, but also women, children, innocent men, and even the elderly. They slaughtered the livestock without even using it. The Muslims that did swear, well, you can just guess what happened to them. They might as well have died fighting. At least they would have died in one piece. This was the beginning of Robert's problems. This had changed him after seeing so much horror. He knew that now that he was here, he had to continue fighting. After a couple of months, the Christian forces were heading towards Jerusalem for a siege. He knew what the <coughs> end would be like, was like, so, but he was more afraid of the beginning. During the first part, part, both sides take very heavy casualties, especially the men in the front lines. After a bit of shelling with their trebuchet, the infantry attacked. But our brave hero was very scared, but he dared not turn around and run away. He would never be able to call himself a true knight again. His bravery, his honor, and his chivalry kept him going. A few of his men were carrying a battering ram so that when they reached the castle, they could bring it down. Ah! Oh, the men screamed and they charged full of lives. Some men went down, taken off by arrows from fired from from behind arrow slits in the enemy's castle. It seemed like the men were taking turns falling. And then it was Robert's turn. He went down with a sudden cry. Ah! He fell out. The barbarians hit him. If they had hit him, in the best place to be hit. He had been shot through the appendix. He didn't know this, but this would be the only reason that he would survive. But he had also been unlucky in a way. He had gone down in the worst possible place, directly beneath part of the castle that has the mortar holes. 
And what was so bad about this was that it wasn't even using something called Greek fire. It acts exactly what it sounds like. Through a nasty mix of chemicals, you could basically rain down fire on the enemy invaders. And so they did. But Robert got lucky in another regard. But he got hit. He was only hit by a very small amount of it. Only enough to burn through a very small part of his body. He got hit on part of his thigh, and it burned through a bit of muscle and tissue. But it burned like Mount Vesuvius going off in his leg. He was almost immediately rendered unconscious by the pain. And the next thing he knew, he was back in face. He had no clue how he got there, but he was glad to be back. Although he felt like a bit of a betrayer to these earlier. Really. What had really happened was that was that, his, that that his forces had retreated. And someone saw that he was still alive, so they picked him up and brought him back. He had survived. They knew that he wouldn't be fighting anytime soon because of his injuries, and they sent him back. The boat ride would have been pleasant, if not for his injuries, and he made it back to his homeland safely. Once home, he spent the first couple of months in bed, recovering from his injuries. During that time, he went a little insane. He was remembering all the horrors of what he had happened to him, and all the nauseating things that he had seen. It was too much for him. He finally cracked, although it did not show for about a week. Obviously, Matilda was stubborn, still in love with him, and his thirst still proved to him, because they had been taking care of him. One night the next week, he had finally been able to move around. He had recovered, and he was invited over for dinner. Now, on the horse ride there, the couple had been arguing. Robert was so insane that he decided that he would kill her and Henry as soon as he got there. Once they got inside, Robert asked for all the doors to be closed. And he said he wanted this because he was uncomfortable with the servants. Once inside, he took his table knife and massacred everyone at the table. Since he did not want to be caught, he calmly walked out of the house. It took a while for the servants to go in and check, but by then he was already at the recruiting area. Back to the board. The seven Vikings. Sir Baldwin and Sir Leo were fencing with rods 